Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein, and today I want to show you how you can use uh, the history of math to teach a topic that plagues high school students, which is um, trig identities. Here are the eight most popular trig identities on the screen in front of you. And the way that this topic is traditionally taught is teachers give a, somewhat of a justification using the unit circle for trig identity number one, and then they pretty much have you memorize number two, number three, number four, and number five. They don't give really any justification for why these are the way they are. You just, you just memorize those. And then you can manipulate them algebraically. Um, number two, the tan together with number five can kind of lead you to number six. And you could take number one and divide through by sine squared and use uh, the substitutions um, from uh, for number five and number three to get identity seven and you could do a similar thing by dividing uh, the top equation through by cosine squared to get number eight. That's traditional way. Students do not succeed with that method. There's no context, there's no way of figuring it out if they forget it and it's just generally a bad way of teaching it. So I'm going to show you uh, a way of deriving all these identities. It's going to answer some mysteries like why is cosecant equal to 1 over sine? And it's also going to give us a way of uh, just developing these identities in a real easy way to recreate them all. I've had a lot of success with this. So let's go over to a diagram. Here I have a unit circle with an angle, angle uh, CAB, and I could change the size. And I'm going to keep the angle for now uh, for this tutorial just between 0 and, and 90 degrees. And I'll tell my students that the, uh, the sine of an angle is literally this line segment, line segment CD. And even just from this, students can get a feel that as the angle goes from 0 to 90, sine always stays less than 1, but gets close to 1. Because it's part of our right triangle ACD, which uh, has a hypotenuse of 1. So already there's a fact here about trigonometry that sine never gets bigger than 1 when you stay uh, as an acute angle. Now for my first couple of identities I'm going to add in a couple of more line segments. Now line segment EB is part of a tangent line and it's actually related to the tangent trig function and AE cutting through the circle is the secant line or that, that, that line cuts through the circle so it's a secant line and there is a reason why these trig functions are called that because if you measure EB that actually is equal to the tangent of that angle and if you measure AE, that hypotenuse, that's going to be the secant and now you can see why secant is always bigger than 1 it's always this hypotenuse which is outside of the circle and you could also see that secant goes from 1 to getting really really big but tangent can get all the way down to zero and get really big also so we get some things about the range of these functions but now I'll show you how this applies to our, our first couple of trig identities if I uh, pull these two these, this, uh, these triangles out we have two similar triangles and based on those similar triangles and the fact that the sides are in proportion I could, uh, well, one identity I could see right off the bat, because ABE is a right triangle, I can say that 1 squared plus tan squared equals secant squared. And that could be my first identity that I teach. It fits right in with that. Um, another identity I could see, it's not a commonly uh, known identity, but it actually comes right out of this picture. I could say something like tan over secant, which is this side and this one of the big triangle, is equal to sine over 1. That's not even one of the top eight identities, but from this picture I could get those two identities. And those are actually the only two identities I can get so far using just those three trig values. Well, to get the other seven known trig identities, um, we're going to need to know what cosine really means. The co in cosine, the co stands for complementary. So if I were to draw in a uh, perpendicular line here, 
And if I just rotate the whole picture like this, angle CAF is complementary to angle CAB, which means that this line segment here would be the uh, would be the cosine. Move this all over. Uh, moving this thing back to where it came from, we have uh, the cosine segment right here is GC. Also, it happens to be AD, which is going to become relevant because we have a rectangle there. But the cosine actual length is right here at GC. Now, if I put in this tangent line and this line connecting it, this is the officially the cotangent. It's the tangent of a complementary angle. And this longer hypotenuse, AH, is officially the cosecant. So now I have all six things here. And if I manipulate the point around, I could see some things. I could see that um, cotan and tan are equal at this point. I get a nice square. See a lot of things going on that students could play around with this diagram. But what's more important is now I could derive the rest of the trig identities. And I find it useful to take these three triangles, AHD, uh, ACD, AEB, and AHF, and put them side by side. Now when you look at these triangles in this configuration, this uh, 33 degree angle is there. If I change this around, you can see all the lengths change also. But these three triangles, and I have my students actually draw these three triangles on their tests, and it helps them derive all eight trig identities, and I'll show you how. So once I have these three pictures drawn, and this is, this is the theta, by the way, in all three triangles, and this is a right angle in all three triangles. And now in the next minute or two, I can say all eight of those trig identities. Because this is a right triangle, I could say sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Because this one's a right triangle, I could say 1 plus tan squared equals secant squared. See, there's no way if you know this picture, you would ever think that it was 1 plus secant squared equals tan squared. You just know secant is the hypotenuse. It's, it's the bigger one. Same thing here. Cotan squared plus 1 equals cosecant. But what I really like about this that it lets us create the other identities also. For instance, um, I could say, I could use this, cosecant over 1. And since that's similar to this other triangle, the small one equals 1 over sine. So there's actually a reason for that identity. Using this triangle, I could say secant over 1. And going over to the small triangle equals 1 over cosine. See, there's a reason for that identity. And over here, I could say cotan over 1. And moving over to this medium triangle equals 1 over tan. So there's six of them. Um, using the medium and the small triangle, I could say tan over 1 equals sine over cosine. And I could even use this one, uh, cotan over 1, since it's similar to the small triangle, uh, equals cosine over sine. So that's, that does it for this tutorial. I've just derived the eight main trig identities using a geometric interpretation of them. Uh, I have my students actually draw these, these, these three pictures on their paper. And once they have those drawn, they can create all eight trig identities in uh, very little time. And the best thing about it is that there's, there's logic to these things now, like there's a reason why cosecant is 1 over sine, there's a reason secant is 1 over cosine, and if they ever forget, they can re-derive them very easily. So I hope you like that tutorial. And that's the end of it.